what has always alleviated our scarcity, what has always alleviated our environmental problems. Technology. What breeds technological dynamism? Economic success, economic stability. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Joshua Jacobs. He's with the Conservative Future Project. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Nick. Describe for us in your words, what is the Conservative Future Project? The Conservative Future Project is a pro-science, pro-technology organization. And, and you guys, in your uh, kind of mission statement, you're online, you talk about wanting to increase scientific advancement using sure. the unbridled force of the free market to bring America back to unrivaled prosperity. Sure. This all sounds good, but why are you conservative? <laughs> One of the things that we wanted to do is that we wanted to show that when you approach deregulation, when you approach tax cuts, when you approach entitlement reform and put us on a sounder fiscal path, you can create the environment that allows these exciting new technologies to come about. Specifically when it comes to regulation, we think there's no contest between conservatives and liberals when it comes to the tech field. The Manhattan Institute came out with a big report about a year ago that indicated that about 90% of the development budget of biotech companies is consumed in the phase three clinical trial, phase three FDA clinical trial. One can only imagine how much more would have been accomplished, how much more would have been brought to market, how much more would have been discovered if those burdens were not so burdensome. Right. Talk a bit about uh, driverless cars. This is, sure. a, you know, this is something that, um, you know, is kind of both interesting and evocative of a yeah. future. This is like a <laughs> Jetsons future. And you, uh, you've already t uh, tussled, or, or the idea of driverless cars is driving yeah. certain reliable parts of the Democratic Party nuts. I mean, unions yeah. hate this idea. Oh, yeah. How is, is driverless cars a conservative issue, and uh, what does it mean for America's future? Everybody and their mother is writing about the legal implications for driverless cars, how our insurance actuary is going to deal with driverless cars. Almost no one, aside from a select few, have written about what the actual impact is going to be on driverless cars. And it almost comes this perennial problem that we have where we see this technology off in the distance. It's not that far off in the distance, but we can't really tell how far. What happens when you have, instead of three and a half million truck drivers, maybe you only have 100,000 truck drivers left because the rest of those trucks are being driven by ar autonomous artificial intelligence running the highways. There is no way we think Teamsters are going to give up without a fight. There's no reason to, if you're them, you know, fight, fight for your livelihood. This is something you have to get out in front of right now if you want to make sure that we can reap the benefits of these new technology, because there are benefits. Talk, um, you know, talk about stem cell research now, because this is, you know, to, to jump from an area, the automation, I can see that an easy sell, not only to the American sure. public, but to conservatives. But then we talk about something like stem cells and, sure. and uh, you know, the possibilities inherent in that. Uh, apart from people like Nancy Reagan, who sure. came out in favor of it, most Republicans are against that. It's yeah. Like most national Republicans. How do you get them to sign on to something which they say, no, this is sure. a Rubicon that we're not going to cross? It seems highly unlikely to me, and I think most people would agree, that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned in the next 20 years, that by 2030, 2040, abortion will still be legal in the United States, and it'll still be legal most places in the world. It is folly to not allow ourselves to take advantage of the medical and scientific opportunities that come with that, regardless how you feel about it, because it can save millions and millions of lives and improve the quality of lives without exaggeration for billions. That's the message that we would try and bring, but we're not going to compromise on our position. We support stem cell research, we support medical research, we support medical science. Talk a little bit about where are the issues that the left is terrible on science and uh, you know, where do they have to be held account to show they're actually not pro-future. Sure. The biggest one that I can think of is probably in electricity. What no one ever calls Democrats and what no one ever calls the green left out on is that the proposals that they're advocating for directly inhibit billions of human beings' access to all of the things that we take for granted. And what we say is, don't turn the power off, turn the power on. Build that coal power plant, build that natural gas power now, plant. Uh, and now, but how do you deal with things like global warming, air pollution? Sure. I mean, is that just not an issue? Or what is, what's the Conservative Future Project's response to making sure that we're all breathing in another 100 years? I don't know if I can give the Conservative Future Project's answer, but I can give my answer. My position is this. One, I think 
a lot of climatologists are on the ball when they say it's probably unlikely that we're going to be able to have a serious impact just with restricting our technology, restricting our output on climate change. What's going to happen is almost certainly going to happen, regardless of what we do in the yeah, next even if, Even if we stop now. Yeah, even if we stop now. It's baked exactly. whatever's going to happen. But what has always taken us out of these holes in the past? What has always alleviated our scarcity? What has always alleviated our environmental problems? Technology. What breeds technological dynamism? Economic success, economic stability. If you want to solve these problems and deal and mitigate with these problems, mitigate these problems, you need to have a healthy economy, you need to have an environment that allows and accelerates the production of these new technologies, and you need to have it sooner rather than later. Well, we'll leave it there. Joshua Jacobs, the group is Conservative Fut the Conservative Future Project. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.